I'd like to welcome all of you to our repeat web webinar, Managing Legionella Bacteria and Cooling Towers, a High Standard of Care. So thank you for your time today. We're, we're going to cover a few things in the uh, broadcast today, starting with what is Legionella, the bacteria, and then move on to what is Legionellosis, the disease, and how it occurs. We'll do some background information about the New York City Bronx outbreaks, and we'll talk about uh, Legionella, how it survives and thrives within building water systems. We'll explore a little bit as to why chemical water treatments have been ineffective in the past and demonstrate how grizzled water systems products alter this paradigm. But Legionella is an environmental aquatic bacterium. It's been around for many, many years, but it's only become an issue in the human environment as we have begun to alter our environment with hot water and air conditioning. So it thrives at temperatures of about 68 degrees to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's very active at body temperatures, about 95, 96 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to eradicate it, it has a half hour kill rate at 140 degrees in water, and if you want to disinfect a kill rate of less than 30 seconds, you need to have your water temperature at 160 degrees. It tends to exist in biofilm and sludge layers and finds protect, protection in naturally occurring amoeba. And it really enjoys dirty, rusty, corroded surfaces, such as you often find in cooling water systems. So what is the disease legionellosis? Well, it's actually two different sets of, of diseases. The first and the most commonly known is Legionnaire's disease. This is an ammonia-like lung infection which often accompanies, is accompanied by uh, severe headaches, an unproductive cough that tends to be very dry, body aches and fever, and the symptoms onset from about 10 to 14 days after exposure. And this is the disease that uh, has been a source of, of concern. Pontiac fever is also a class of legionellosis, but it end, ends up being more as a flu-like reaction to an exposure, generally about 24 to 72 hours uh, after. So the, these two diseases uh, comprise what is known as legionellosis. And Legionnaire's disease will be the focus of our talk today. So how does an individual get Legionnaire's disease? They have to deeply inhale a mist or an aerosol that contains the Legionella bacteria. Most people can fight it off, and infection rates generally are believed to be less than 5% or so. Mortality, depending upon the type of out outbreak, can run between 10 and 30 percent, and most of the cases up to 50 percent in hospital health settings, healthcare settings. So, some risk factors, which are very well known, are primarily for smokers, older persons 65 years of, of age or older, smokers, and uh, health challenge with lung infection disorders. Uh, and anybody who might be immune compromised. Also, diabetes patients have been shown to have some key risk. Sometimes if you're male, your risk might be a little bit better than female. So these risk factors, we, uh, what we call the at-risk populations, and we'll show what that means as we go through this. So transmission to human really must occur with an aerosol being developed from a fluid that's amplified with Legionella bacteria. And commonly known sources are uh, cooling towers, showers, whirlpool spas, decorative water fountains, and water features. These are well known to be transmission elements to human beings. And in order to really develop the disease the, and develop an infection, it requires a deep inhalation of an aerosol into the alveolar region of the lungs. This is the endpoint in your lung system where the oxygen and uh, blood exchange occurs. So it's the endpoint of the lungs. And once there, the Legionella can infect the macrophages in the lung. They are our natural uh, cleaners. They uh, take care of waste, debris, uh, dirt, etc. that enter our lungs. And they really resemble naturally occurring amoeba in water. And that's where the source of disease comes from. We'll talk a little bit about the New York City outbreak, which has really heightened awareness of the disease and received a lot of pu uh, publicity. 
there were 133 persons sickened. Most of them were hospitalized. The average age is 55, and most had underlying health conditions that fit that legionellosis risk profile we discussed. 60% of them were male, and one case was reported outside of New York City had stayed at the hotel in question. Unfortunately, there were 16 deaths, which translates to a 12% mortality rate. So let's discuss a little bit about what happened at the uh, epidemic outbreak in the South Bronx cluster and, and really look at what the path is and what that really tells us as far as cooling tower and, and cooling water uh, transmission of disease. Both of these, uh, gra uh, one graph and the timeline you see, come directly from the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. This is available on their website. And it gives you the timeline of when the investigation started. And then on the left-hand side, you see the legionellosis cluster in the South Bronx based on onset date. So by patient interviews, they were able to determine when a person uh, began uh, demonstrating symptoms, presenting symptoms of legionellosis. So this is when the Department of Mental Health and Hygiene uh, began its investigation on July 20th. As you can see, there's a fair number of cases that have already occurred. By the time they got around to identifying a suspect cooling tower, after testing multiple cooling towers in the area, they found that the uh, Opera House Hotel and uh, the Legionella was there, and they ordered a disinfection. So knowing that the onset rate onset point of disease is 10 to 14 days, we can actually go back and look at what the exposure profile might be. So the, the exposure profile shows that by the time the cooling tower was identified and disinfected, the damage had been done and it was, it was too late to prevent additional disease. So this, this understanding when the amplification occurs is important. The problem is there's really no current test that will allow you immediate identification of an amplification event in a cooling water system. So this becomes a little bit of a problem, but this is not uncommon in many outbreaks. So in trying to determine the source, this is the uh, a, a illustration of all the patients that they diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease. And those are the green dots. The red dots were those that they had DNA results from sputum or other uh, clinical cultures from the patients themselves. So as you can see that there's a, a widespread uh, uh, area of the disease in the South Bronx. And the, uh, the hotel in question has the big red triangle in the center. Now, so what they're able to do is by looking at the clinical isolates, and also identifying the legionella species in the cooling tower at the Opera House Hotel, they postulated that that was the actual source. This can be questioned uh, a little bit in that if the legionella bacteria itself was, was present in the distribution system, that it could have been found in multiple different locations. However, other cooling towers in the area did not have the same outbreak strain in that cooling tower. So you can see that this is not necessarily cause and effect, but it is significant as far as trying to find the source of disease. So one question that we can look at is where did the Legionella bacteria come from? Well, additional research shows that a large infrastructure project uh, which delivers water to the South Bronx came online in May of 2015. This was a massive three-year project. Uh, and then while it was brought back up online, it's pretty uh, pretty certain that the disturbances caused in bringing this distribution system back up to par uh, might have actually dislodged Legionella or uh, caused significant issues with the distribution system. And the continued outbreaks that occurred in September at Melrose Houses in the Morris Park section of East Bronx uh, also indicates that this was not just an isolated event to a single cooling tower, but maybe have a, a larger point of, uh, of a larger source. So what's the path to Legionnaire's disease? Well, amplification is the required step 
where a virulent and infectious type of Legionella species uh, gets into the uh, it gets into the fluid or the aerosol. And as I said before, altering the amb ambient temperatures in the water, heating it or using it for, for cooling water, plays perfectly into the ecology of Legionella. Mature biofilm are an also a, a source, uh, a required source for developing the path to Legionellosis disease. So um, amoeba graze on the biofilm and the amoeba can harbor the Legionella bacteria and protect them from uh, common chemical attack or other environmental upset, including sometimes hot water. If no biofilm is present, there's no support for these amoeba populations and the chance for disease is slim. This amplification process occurs when the Legionella hijack the amoeba from the inside and then multiply rapidly. And this uh, requires, again, the biofilm to, to feed the source of amoeba uh, within the biofilm. Regardless of temperature, this mature biofilm is the, the point at which you need to try to attack the uh, presence of the disease. So this amplification process involves the Legionella getting inside, hijacking that amoeba, and then releasing tens of thousands of Legionella back into the water. This is amplification. And the amplif amplification event also changes the characteristics of these Legionella bacteria and makes them highly infectious. So to graphically illustrate the path to Legionnaire's disease, we, we come up with this uh, this diagram. Inside this diagram, this the larger outside circle, we're calling that the sphere of disease risk. Anything inside that circle either compounds the risk or maintains the path to finding a patient with Legionnaire's disease. And it begins with low counts of Legionella species that enter into the cooling water system, either from the makeup water or from the environment in the air. Then you have to have a mature biofilm to feed amoeba, and then amplification inside the amoeba to release that virulent strain of Legionella into the water. And then the aerosol must be produced, containing the Legionella within those fine droplets, and then transmitted to an at-risk individual, and then deeply inhaled. And then you have the potential for a patient with Legionnaire's disease if they fall within that risk category and cannot fight off the disease. So let's look at this a little bit more closely when it comes to current state-of-the-art in water treatment. So the point at which chemicals must stop the cycle but often don't is at this point here, after amplification occurs. But as we saw in the illustration from the New York City outbreak, that you can't always determine when your cooling tower is in an amplification event. And this is critical as far as trying to be able to prevent disease. So the best point at which preventing disease, uh, but is also the most difficult for state-of-the-art chemical water treatment programs, is to eliminate the mature biofilm. Biofilm and uh, biofilm prevention with state-of-the-art chemicals can be very, very difficult. Um, and this is really one of the reasons why the, the state-of-the-art is going to be insufficient for making sure that disease is prevented. And the biofilm is that culprit for harboring the bacteria. It's structured by nature to shelter microbes from harsh environments, including chemical attack in a cooling water system. And mature biofilm develops a very tough polysaccharide slime layer that prevents high chlorine doses or other oxidants from eradicating the biofilm completely. And new pioneer microbes can reestablish the biofilm rather quickly as well. So controlling bacteria populations and biofilm is the key to preventing disease. So now we're going to discuss a little bit how Grizzled Water Systems and Tegra Clean 2.0 with WAVE achieves outstanding results. So I'm going to give you a quick review of Integra Clean, but I'm, I would ask you to uh, contact your local Grizzled Water Systems representative for more technical information, because that really exceeds the scope of what we're trying to do here. But the important part of IntegraClean utilizing WAVES, it combines clean sweep and WAVE to provide the best 
prevention of legionellosis. It pre prevents uh, not only the uh, solids in which pathogens such as legionellosis can propagate, but also saves water and energy. And this is the best product that's out there uh, offered by any manufacturer. So slime is biofilm. If you detect slime in your cooling water system at any point, you have a biofilm issue. If you can detect it by touch, it's very likely that that is a mature biofilm. Biofilm is a real issue in cooling water systems because it, it's four times more insulating than an equivalent thickness of scale and can really harm uh, chiller tube efficiency. It fouls cooling tower fill, traps dirt and debris, and lowers that, uh, the uh, heat rejection efficiency of the cooling tower. Underneath mature biofilms, microbial influence corrosion can damage metal surfaces, especially chiller tubes. And of course, it's going to harbor pathogens, Legionella being the focus of this particular webinar. One thing that happens with grizzled water systems equipment with WAVE is we can establish and maintain very low and stable bacteria counts. This particular graph shows an installation at an injection molding company where you can see the broad swings of bacteria populations measured in colony forming units per milliliter. This is where you use a, a, a plate to determine the number of bacteria that are uh, in a milliliter of water. After the wave has been installed, you can see a couple of swings where the biofilm is actually dying off and releasing additional bacteria in the water to go out as pioneer bacteria and find a new home. However, very quickly you can see that the counts are maintained at or below 1,000 CFU per milliliter. And I need to point out that this is well below an order of magnitude less than the CTI target of 10,000 CFU per milliliter. CTI has established this as a, uh, the Cooling Tower uh, Institute, the Cooling Technology Institute has established this as the definition of a tower that's well controlled in microbial growth. And as I alluded to earlier, chemical biocides really do not easily penetrate the biofilm, but wave 2.0 causes biofilms to disintegrate. The consistent control of the bacteria populations lead to a low organic uh, growth or low organic content of the water. This nutrient limitation or the thin broth that's need to maintain the biofilm uh, does not uh, exist or it, it does exist and it prevents the biofilm from getting to that mature state. In order to, as you see in this demonstration, the mature biofilm has channels where the bacteria will obtain nutrients and dispose of waste through these channels of the mature biofilm. So if there's no organic support for that, the biofilm itself will die off. And biofilms are not permanent structures within a cooling water system. They come and go. So the fact that a, a biofilm will die off naturally, it's replaced by, uh, by an immature or just pioneer bacteria on the surface. So what are, just to recap the bio, biological control advantages of WAVE and IntegraClean, the species of bacteria is not a factor because we're using two physical methods to control those. And again, please get that information from your local grizzled water systems rep. And since these are physical methodologies, bacteria cannot build up resistance to them. This re results in low total bacteria counts on a consistent basis and nutrient limitation destroys the existing biofilm and prevents new formations. So what does this mean as far as Legionnaire's disease prevention? Well, if there's no biofilm, there's uh, a reduced population of amoeba that are supported by that biofilm. With, without the amoeba, amplification is not possible and disease prevention is more likely. So where does biofilm grow in a cooling tower? Well, anywhere, but especially low flow areas, dead legs, stagnant piping, and also in the sludge of cooling tower basins on the tower fill and in ch chiller tubes itself. So what are the cures to helping you remove the biofilm? If you use IntegraClean basin sweeping, it'll protect the, your heat exchanger efficiency and add and promote to cleanliness. 
If you rotate your chiller room equipment, you'll eliminate stagnation in the piping. And paying attention to what's happening within your equalizers, which can re-inoculate systems with stagnant system bacteria growth, or you can slightly unbalance them to push the water through from one side to the, X, to the other. You can also cross-connect large supply and return headers in a mechanical space to prevent shoulder season stagnation at low loads and lower flows. So let's talk a little bit about what Clean Sweep is. And, and Clean Sweep is only available from grizzled water systems. And it's a patented process by which instead of stirring up the basin with highly turbulent water, as is the, the, the common method now in basin cleaning, we use a very low pressure system, about three pounds of entry header, uh, entry header pressure, to move the water along the floor of the basin to a point where it's uh, uh, sucked up and, and exited back to the separator system, allowing for very high particle capture rates and very high efficiencies. Now, this, the idea of the of the current basin sweeping with the turbulence to create a clean basin. Uh, is effective in that. However, as you resuspend particles that have already settled in the basin, what you're doing is you're putting those back into the system so that they can impact other areas of heat exchanger and, and piping. This is not where you want to put your particles once they're settled. Once they're settled, you like to collect them and, and uh, pull them back into the separator where they can be effectively removed. And this is what Clean Sweep does. So we're looking for that clean basin and chiller protection, the efficient solids removal, and the fact that it's easily retrofitted to any tower design uh, make this an ideal solution for most customers. And the again, the most important function is protecting the chiller from those solids. And when you install Clean Sweep as a part of Integra Clean 2.0 with Wave, it allows higher cycles of concentration, which means you're using less water and you're cooling tower system is more efficient. One of the things that might be important to note is that Griswold Water Systems, Integra Clean and Wave, both comply with any restrictions or, or the guidance uh, in standard 188. It was just released this year in June of 2015. This standard is a process of creating a water plan to prevent the uh, propagation of legionella bacteria and hence disease from the from your water system. One of the things that you must know is that there is many paths to compliance within a particular building as there are buildings. Each one is a little bit different, so the standard lays out a way and a process to create an effective plan. At this point in time, compliance is voluntary until it's adopted by codes, except in New York City, New York State, which is working on regulations that uh, involve Standard 188. And again, Grizzled Water Systems products com uh, fully comply with Standard 188. Part of that means applying best practices, and some of these are universal to good water treatment. So Integra Clean and Clean Sweep with, uh, with Clean Sweep and Wave control the scale, corrosion, and biological growth and biofilm in the system. This is very important as far as a best practice is concerned. To do this, you want to make sure that your maintenance practices are up to date, making sure the cooling tower is clean and inspected regularly. You want to make sure that centrifugal separation is, uh, is in place to control solids. For operational practices, you want to make sure we avoid those stagnant water conditions. And you want to make sure that you are demonstrating eff efficacy of your control strategy with visual, with physical and visual inspections, periodic total bacteria count using 9215B, which is not Legionella testing, but just general bacteria testing. And then you also want to try to confirm the absence of a biofilm in a way treated tower by making sure that you... Uh, insert your hand and feel for active biofilms, mature biofilms in the system. Generally, you just won't find them with grizzled water systems equipment. So now we're going to talk about a little bit of a, of a uh, touchy subject and one that's, that's certainly not settled. But should you test for Legionella? Well, the testing methods, the BCYE culture, buff, buffered charcoal yeast extract culture test, uh, is flawed, but it is the best available. 
And sometimes the results from, from these tests can be misleading. The BCYE allows for enumeration uh, and speciation, but it's really slow. It takes about 10 to 14 days. And the BCYE culture test requires skill and subjective evaluation at each step. It requires so much skill that the CDC has uh, put together what they call their elite lab program to demonstrate that certain labs across the United States have demonstrated effective uh, skill to properly perform the BCYE culture. As far as being slow, there is a, a quick BCYE test that you can get information back within a couple of days, but it doesn't focus on those uh, specific uh, those specific species which cause the most disease that requires the full 14 day test so what do the experts say about this well the CDC discouraged the use of BCYE as a monitoring or control strategy in other words they, the CDC wants to make sure that you're you're promoting good practices in your cooling water system. But blindly testing as surveillance will cause a vicious circle of disinfection and retesting from which a customer may never recover. ASHRAE Standard 188 only requires consideration of BCYE testing in the validation section of should the program team or those who are putting the plan together judge it necessary based on the building characteristics or the potential in a healthcare setting. In general, most experts agree that active water plant management is the best way to prevent disease from occurring. So why is BCYE culture not definitive? Well, the results depend upon a lot of vectors. The sampling location and the method of sampling. Sample handling, transit time to a lab, temperature st stability of that sample, and then finally, through a very technical process, subjective analysis of the BCYE results. And this, this picture here illustrates the fact that, especially in cooling water systems, you have significant overgrowth of other things in the water that can cause a, a plate not to be very clear or require replating should the sample be uh, too contaminated with other items that are growing on the media. And even the CDC in a 2011 analysis of their LEAP program certification showed a high error rate. This error rate occurred despite using a procedure that eliminated the sampling and handling variables that I just mentioned. In other words, they are rehydrating samples uh, and then immediately plating them. So there's no opportunity for either bacteria to grow or die off in the sample handling aspect. And once a successful plating occurs, enumeration of the bacteria is highly subjective. So here's a, a, a cut from a slide, and I'd invite all the listeners to look at this and determine how many colonies are shown in this particular section of a, of a plate. Well, it could be four, could be six, might be all of them. It's, it's really tough to say. Well, there's actually only two, the one in the upper left and the one here in the uh, center right. So the reading of these plates can be highly subjective, where a small lighting change might make all the difference. And the fact that the, the skill set of the individual technician really needs is uh, can be challenged to do an accurate count. You think of looking at a, at a plate and doing counts to make sure you're not overcounting, you're moving the, the plate in the proper way, the lighting is correct, and that you have uh, the attention of this demanding and arduous process. So let's review a little bit more about this sphere of disease risk uh, and why BCYE culture may not be advised. Well, Again, we're talking about the point at which mature biofilm or the point at which chemicals need to stop the cycle, but often don't or cannot. Again, just trying to eliminate that mature biofilm to feed the amoeba or to stop an amplification event in its tracks with overdosing 
of biocides to prevent uh, ampl uh, to prevent the aerosol from getting to at-risk individuals. Well, let's look at a at a different the uh, what, what Griswold Water Systems uh, has with its its equipment and its application to control Legionella. So we have low counts of Legionella species which enter the water. This is no different than any other cooling water system. However, very low bacteria counts result. And then that, in turn, eliminates the biofilm to support the amplifiers. Amoeba populations are greatly reduced. Dangerous amplification then is not possible. And since there's no infectious Legionella bacteria, we find ourselves completely outside that sphere of risk. Integra Clean and a high standard of care uh, document is available. It's a comprehensive and detailed outline with uh, describing how Griswold Wave 2.0 and Tegra Clean 2.0 can manage legionellosis within your cooling water system. Since you've signed up for this webinar, this will be sent to your inbox, or you can ask your local GWS sales representative for more information on this. So today we've covered legionella, legionellosis, and how it occurs, information about the New York City South Bronx community outbreak, the risks associated with Legionella in building water systems. We uh, discovered why chemical treatments have been ineffective in the past and how grizzled water system products, Wave and Integra Clean 2.0, shift this paradigm.